the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, coming to you from the MGM Grand Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The glittering city of excitement and laughter provides the scintillating backdrop for tonight's star-studded roast. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Ziegfeld Room of the Grand Hotel, some of the world's greatest entertainers are here tonight as Dean Martin honors our man of the hour, Muhammad Ali, with tonight's guest, Howard Cosell, Orson Welles, Freddie Prinze, Gabe Kaplan, Tony Orlando, Gene Kelly, Isabel Sanford, Wilt Chamberlain, Sherman Hemsley, Red Button, Rocky Graziano, Georgia Engel, Lloyd Patterson, Foster Brooks, Nipsey Russell, Herbert Mohammed, and your Roastmaster Dean Martin with tonight's very special man of the hour, Mohammed Ali. Whenever you see this guy, he's always yelling, I'm the greatest. <laughs> I'm the greatest. <laughs> now, lots of people don't agree, like Joe Frazier, <laughs> Ken Norton, and a cocktail waitress in Cleveland. <laughs> See, he's a great fighter, a great wit, and a great humanitarian. I say that out of respect, out of esteem, and out of fear. <laughs> no one can deny that he's a great fighter. He's got all the equipment, great body, great legs, and he's got a 21-inch reach. And that's just his tongue. <laughs> Flattening us, cousin. <laughs> I'll call Frank. <laughs> Mr. Freddie Prince. Wow. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much on behalf of here we are, the Hudson Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Hello, champ. I'm very proud to be here because uh, as a kid growing up in Spanish Harlem, I used to watch Muhammad Ali on TV all the time, which was hard to do while two guys were carrying it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Ali, he's, I like him because he's a very moral man. He doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't gamble, doesn't go running around with wild women. If I did that, I could beat up everybody too. <laughs> And he's a God-fearing man. It's nice to know he's afraid of somebody. <laughs> See, but Muhammad Ali showed all us kids that it was possible for a poor boy to get out of the ghetto. And that's what my mother always wanted for me. She would say to me, Freddy, what's the matter with you? Don't hang out. I don't go to college. Be a doctor. Who wanted to be a doctor in my neighborhood? It's difficult to make a house call to a burning house. <laughs> well, she would say, Freddy, be a dentist. There's plenty of teeth in the neighborhood. And she was right. They were over there, over there. <laughs> anyway, what's the big deal about going to college to learn how to be something? Especially with today's job situation. What do you need college for? So you can hold a better conversation in the unemployment line? <laughs> so you can say to the cashier, may I have my weekly benefits instead of give me my money, sucker? <laughs> I was fascinated by a man like Ali, you know, because he got out of poverty with his fists. So I said to myself, why couldn't I? Everybody told me I had fast, exciting hands, hands that could penetrate any defense and do a magnificent job. If you don't believe me, ask Conchita, Luella, Shirley. <laughs> Shirley Silberg, she was a social worker and she did her best work when she was social. <laughs> There's a difference between a black fighter and a Puerto Rican fighter. Like a black fighter come up to you, all right, chump, look out, here I come. Show me your best stuff. Woo! Look out. Puerto Rican fighter just come out. 
Oke, okay, Meng. See, but Muhammad Ali is my idol and uh I gave up the idea of being a fighter though. I did, you know, because uh a champ, I'll tell you why in your own poetic way. I thought I would take up fighting to win my fortune and fame. I thought I could whoop them other cats and be tops in the fighting game. So I showed my stuff to my buddies and this is what they saw. I was fighting just like Ali, but I did it like Ali McGraw. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> anyway, I really can relate to being here tonight because I have a history of boxers in my family. First of all, it was my uncle, Slapsy Maxie Kaplan. <laughs> you know, a lot of fighters train on steaks. My uncle ate nothing but pickled herring. He couldn't box, but he knocked out his opponents with his breath. <laughs> talking about boxes, we have a lot of greats here tonight. We have Floyd Patterson. Floyd is the first man to regain the heavyweight championship. Some people say that Floyd couldn't take a punch. Well, I don't know about that, but the Corning Glass Company is bidding on his chin. <laughs> the second man to regain the heavyweight championship was Muhammad Ali. Mohammed, I took a poll in the lobby of this hotel just before this roast, and people here hope that you retain that heavyweight championship belt for a long time. There is one condition, though, that you agree to wear it over your mouth. <laughs> and listen, Mohammed, your poetry, I mean, enough already. This is the only man here who ever made Rod McEwen throw up. <laughs> Mohammed is always saying that he's pretty. I mean, anybody would look pretty if the only men you ever stood next to were Howard Cosell and Joe Frazier. <laughs> but this is a man who never forgets his beginnings, Muhammad Ali. In the men's room of this hotel today, he gave his cousin a dollar tip. <laughs> but at least he's playing it safe with his money. I was talking to Muhammad's chief financial advisor, Joe Lewis. <laughs> And they have great plans for Mohammed's money. They're going to invest in a chain of Howard Cosell charm schools. <laughs> I'd like to close Mohammed with a little poem, and you'll excuse me if the style sounds a little familiar. Tonight we're roasting the greatest fighter alive. People say different things about Ali, some of them are really jive. I'm gonna tell you something that I don't know if you knew. He gives to his people, but he gives to other people too. So I'm gonna say this right now as loud as I can, sitting right over here is a mighty big man. Yeah. Red, Mark. Why are they giving this man a roast when some of the greatest black people in the history of the world, never got a dinner. <laughs> That's right, when they never got a dinner. Sidney Poitier, who once said to Lester Maddox, guess who's not coming to dinner? <laughs> never got a dinner. George Foreman, who said to the referee during the Ali fight, I think he's got a razor. <laughs> Crispus Adams, the black revolutionary war hero who said at the Battle of Bunker Hill, don't fire till you see the whites. <laughs> Never got a dinner. <laughs> Will Chamberlain's mother, who once said kids don't look up to their parents anymore. Yes, Chan, Justice Thurgood Marshall, who said when he was appointed to the Supreme Court, here come the judge. <laughs> hey, 
hammer. One said, these hotcakes are selling like hotcakes. <laughs> you ever got a dinner? <laughs> Uncle Remus, who once said to Uncle Ben, you're a credit to your rice. <laughs> She was invited to the White House. I'll sing and I'll dance, but I don't do windows. <laughs> I got a dinner, and certainly one of the greatest blacks of all time, Shirley Temple Black. <laughs> I got a dinner, but as ambassador to Ghana, she could be the dinner. <laughs> A fine young singer and a, a great pal of the champs, Mr. Tony Orlando. You can't go on fighting forever, Mohammed. I mean, let's face it, you're not Sonny and Cher. Matter of fact, he's so enterprising, Mohammed. One night he called Freddie and I, Freddie Prince with the house. Remember this one, Freddie? Yeah. Calls up, always creating a new business idea in case it's all over, and he says, Tony, I got it. Me, you and Freddie are going into a soap detergent business. We're gonna call it Spick and Shine. <laughs> you. you told me backstage that uh, you wanted to make Halloween a legal black holiday? He did, he told me that. He said, after all, it's the only night of the year that the spooks come out to chase the honkies. <laughs> this is all in good fun, Mohammed. Don't hold this against me. <laughs> Actually, good luck, champ, because you are, without a doubt, the greatest fighter since Cassius Clay. Over the years, Muhammad Ali has taken on every heavyweight challenger except one. And that fighter is here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the beast of Bayonne, the great white hope, Billy Boom Boom Berkowitz. Scared of? <laughs> I'll show you. I'm scared of this body. <laughs> what do you think of it, huh? Tell me the truth. What do you think of this uh, body? Last time I saw anything like that, my dog was burying it. <laughs> Ma, Howard, you've been avoiding me for years. You get a $5 million fight and who's there? <laughs> I can't get a $50 bout in Poland. <laughs> all you give me is promises. You're all talk, talk, that's what you are, talk. When they built your mouthpiece, they made the mold from the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> Charlie Callum. <laughs> Will Chamberlain. My next guest is an athlete who holds all kinds of scoring records, and some of them in basketball. <laughs> Come on up here, Wilt, or whatever pleases you. Better... 
You better sit down before I slam one paisano. They don't have me up here because they weren't someone that was tall, dark, and handsome. Got something a lot darker. <laughs> Most people don't realize that you had a physical handicap when you were born. Did you know that Muhammad was a girl? One of my favorite people uh, and one of the nicest ladies I know is Georgia Engel, <laughs> the Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> Georgia is so kind and considerate that she leaves a nightlight on for burglars. <laughs> Georgia. No, you, you can call me by my first name. All right. What is it? <laughs> Whenever I do these roasts, the producer supplies me with some rough zingers to say about the guests here on the dais. So here I am again, once again, with some more raps, slams, put down sticks, and a couple of rim shot hits. <laughs> okay, my first zinger. I'm glad to see Howard Cosell here. Howard recently had his own television variety show. The rating was so low, only the gophers were watching. <laughs> a terrible thing to say. I think, I think the only reason you didn't make it was because of the opposition. Unfortunately, both of the other networks had a show on at the same time. <laughs> of course, Dean Martin is here as always. Don't you like that handkerchief in his breast pocket? It used to be white until he rubbed his eyes with it. <laughs> I don't think your eyes are red. Of course, I've never really seen them open. <laughs> it's nice to see my friend Tony Orlando here tonight. The way Tony sings, dances, and does comedy, they should change the name of his act to Yawn and Dawn. <laughs> It doesn't matter that you don't have much talent. You're a star. <laughs> and now we come to our guest of honor, Muhammad Ali. I wouldn't say that Ali has an ego problem, but he's the only person I know who has his ex-waves retouched. <laughs> that really wasn't nice, I'm sorry. Um, you have a right to be conceited. You're the greatest. Why, in fact, you told me that if you weren't a fighter, you'd be a contortionist, so you could die in your own arms. <laughs> I hope I haven't offended anyone. That's it for the zingers. <laughs> Muhammad Ali's record in the ring is loaded with impressive words. His recent knockout of Joe Fraser in Manila was one of the most exciting fights of this decade. And many sports writers have written it up, well, in glowing terms. Here with us tonight is one of those writers who covered this bout. He's from the Louisville Courier. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Crystal.
Thank you, Mr. Martin. You're absolutely right when you say that the Manila fight was one of the greatest fights in history, but it wasn't perfect, Ali. This was missing. Hello once again, everyone. Howard Cosell coming to you. We are coming to you live via satellite from Manila, the Philippines, Pearl of the South Pacific. <laughs> Muhammad, come, Angelo, get Muhammad over here. <laughs> here he is now, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Frazier was incredible. How'd you feel about the contest? <laughs> Everybody's talking about Joe Fraser. Don't want to talk about Joe. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of nonsense. I'm still so fast. And you know I'm so pretty. <laughs> I'm so fast I can turn out the lights in my bedroom, be in the bed before the room gets dark. <laughs> In retrospect, looking back. <laughs> there is only one Ali, there can never be another. He is singularly Ali, solely Ali. That's the fact that makes him great. The fact that there is only one Ali. Numero uno. There is little I can say about this man that he has not already said himself. <laughs> Patterson was always considered one of the smartest fighters in the business. He knew that if you were going to fight guys like Ali, you needed two things, a good right cross and the phone number for Blue Cross. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a great champion, Floyd Patterson. Thank you, Dean. It's good to be standing here. Because whether he likes it or not, the champ has to look up to me. <laughs> I'm sure he invested his purses wisely by buying stock, bonds, and real estate. But by now, he must be interested in the bakery business. Because no fighter has ever had as much experience with cream puffs. <laughs> and if he doesn't challenge me soon, you'll have to invest in chicken delight. <laughs> I suppose my biggest mistake was not taking the champ seriously when I signed to fight him. All I heard about him was he danced around the ring spouting poetry. He kept saying, I'm going to whoop you, whoop you, whoop you. I said, that's whip. Whip, whip. <laughs> don't mind if you're brutal, but don't be illiterate. <laughs> the champ always says he's the greatest, but he never finishes that statement. <laughs> But if you listen to them long enough, you can fill in the blanks yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Floyd. And after the show, I'd uh, love to have you stop in my dressing room. I'll show you what it's like to have a real championship belt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, old mighty mouth, my pal, humble Howard Cosell. <laughs> Thank you, Dino. 
It's what sudden... the hell right you got to call me Dino? <laughs> a sudden resort to vocal truculence hardly becomes you, Dino. I never drove a truck in my life. You know, my friend, it suddenly occurred to me that you and I could do a little dance act. Do it together. The next time you play this hotel, we could call it a tantalizing tandem of toe-tapping terpsichore. I could just see our names on the marquee. Humble and stumble. <laughs> I have admired this man ever since that fateful evening in Lewiston, Maine, when he, f he stalked that fearsome black specimen, Sonny Liston, like a black panther. Don't call him black. Sit down. <laughs> What you want me to do? Call you a white tornado? <laughs> Suddenly it was all over in less than one round. The invisible punch. The referee not able to count. It was Jersey Joe Walcott. He went up to 24. Nat Fleischer told him the fight was over. The only thing that went down faster than Liston that night was the ratings on my Saturday night variety. <laughs> Many of you have criticized Ali's performance in the ring, but he has every right to say I am the greatest. What other fighter has a heartbeat of 50 per minute and a mouthbeat of 280? <laughs> Muhammad, I don't care what any of these detractors have to say. If I was shipwrecked on a desert island and I could pick one man to have as my companion, I'd pick you. <laughs> On a desert island, you need a man Friday. <laughs> Everybody wants to see me do something to you, right? Yeah. I don't want your lawyers to sue me. I don't want your TV company to sue me, but I've been waiting. You always said, Muhammad, you're not the same man you was years ago. Show the people now, show the American public, you're not the same you was a few years ago. You want to know the truth? I found him when he was a little black kid in Louisville stealing bikes. I made him what he is. That's it. <laughs> No fighter practices more and harder than our honored guest. We have with us tonight the person who helps hone this great fighting machine to a keen edge. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali's sparring partner, K.O. Kelly. You're K.O. Kelly? No! <laughs> I'm his girlfriend! <laughs> oh, I'm on to you, you boozer! I wasn't born yesterday! I know you couldn't get uh, that ugly in 24 hours. <laughs> Barfly, just sit down and mind your own business. <laughs> There's something I want to say to this bronze bully. <laughs> Listen, jive turkey. <laughs> the man ruined my life. Every time my boyfriend comes over after boxing with him, he's so tired doing the shuffle with Ali, he can't do the hustle with me. <laughs> he starts out in the morning skipping rope, and then at night he skips me. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget when I first met K.O. Kelly. He was fighting three rounders in the preliminaries. But we took one look at each other and decided to skip the preliminaries. <laughs> Everything was wonderful. 
Bible until he became Ali's sparring partner. Then workouts all the time, day and night, night and day. Even in the back seat of the Jeep, he never laid a glove on me. <laughs> Ali always made fun of my boyfriend. Just because his hair is turning gray, it doesn't mean you have to call him Whitey. <laughs> You know, before I sit down, I gotta say one thing. It's all your fault. And if you wanna make something of it, I want you to meet me out in the parking lot and we'll have it out man to man. Ladies and gentlemen, one of Hollywood's truly great talents, uh, actor, dancer, singer, director, superstar, Mr. Gene Kelly. Thank you, Gene. Your introduction to me was very nice. It may not have been hilarious, but at least you knew who I was. <laughs> Ali, you're truly a magnificent fighter. And I can say this, because I've seen some of the great ones. The unforgettable Joe Lewis, Billy Kahn fight, the knockdown, drag him out, Rocky Graziano, Tony Zale fight, and probably the bloodiest of them all, the classic battle between Sonny and Cher. <laughs> I suppose the reason that fighters in general, and you in particular, have always appealed to me is because in every great fighter, I visualize a dancing master. With Tony Galento, it was the beer barrel polka. <laughs> With you, it's the alley shuffle. <laughs> and anyone who's ever paid $100 to see you fight knows you're great at the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I respect you as a fighter, I respect you more as a human being. Because I'll never forget the time when you held that press conference in Beverly Hills and I brought my two children, Bridget and Tim, down there because they wanted to meet you. And although a lot of reporters were bombarding you and surrounding you and asking you questions, you stopped everything and held a private, little quiet session with my two kids. And neither I nor my children will ever forget your warmth and your tenderness. <laughs> Gentlemen, the stars of the Jeffersons, Sherman Hemsley and Isabel Sanford. Let's see.
Thank you, Dean. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> hey, hold it. If anybody's gonna thank Dean Martin, I'll do it. Oh, all right, go ahead. But who wants to thank that turkey? <laughs> so, you Muhammad Ali, huh? <laughs> Me? Look like nothing to me, chum. <laughs> you wanna step out in the alley, alley? <laughs> Too bad you're not more like Muhammad Ali. Look at him. Tall, handsome, and he has the manners of a gentleman. Big deal. It so happens that I have the manners of a gentleman. Really? What gentlemen do they belong to? <laughs> We're gonna sell this once and for all. Stand up, Turkey. Stand up, jump. <laughs> what you gonna do? You know, you lucky I can't stand the sight of blood. Especially your own blood. <laughs> you don't have to, I'm for real. No, I'm for real too. I'm for real. Gentlemen, at 170 pounds and still a champ, and boy, I love this man. He uh, Italian too. Rocky <laughs> Graziano. We got so much in common, Muhammad. I read a book. You read a book. Of course, my book was wrote before yours. <laughs> My book was called Somebody Up There Likes Me. They made a movie from it with Paul Newman. I could have done the part, you know, but I wanted to give that poor Paul Newman a break. <laughs> it's real literature. To me, when they list the literary men who wake on the paper, your name will be there with all the other great literates. <laughs> You were beautiful. But the book wasn't rotten. It was rotten. <laughs> With us tonight is the trainer and bodybuilding genius who made the champ what he is today. Let's give a warm welcome to Foster Brooks. <laughs> It's, ama it's amazing. He's, he's a fighter and you have the alcohol rub. <laughs> the first thing I did to build up Muhammad, huh? Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. <laughs> you know, it's this brown clown here. <laughs> the first thing I did was to change Muhammad's diet. He was, he was eating, he was, he, he was eating collard greens. But that's what collard folks eat. <laughs> I filled his plumb little body with, with wheat germ. And when I ran out of wheat germ, I gave him diseased wheat. <laughs> After I built his body, I had to eat, I had, I had to, to teach him how, the famous Ali shuffle. How to, how to move around the ring, how to dance. You know these people, they haven't any rhythm. <laughs> Before I changed the champ into a super great, to a super, super fighter he is today, he, he was, he was a different man. He was young. 
inexperienced, a 97-pound weakling, and, oh, yes, yeah, one other thing, he, he was white. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I change the man, I go all, all the way, all, all the way. guest is the brilliant Orson Welles. Who will ever forget that scary radio show he did? It, it drove thousands of people into the streets screaming. The last time I uh, heard such screaming was the night Howard Cosell walked into the casino of the MGM Grand without his hairpiece. <laughs> getting laughs. These two guys are getting them. <laughs> hey, this is my good pal and a genius. And when I say a genius, I mean... <laughs> I mean a genius. If there ever was one. <laughs> Mr. Orson Well. I'm most grateful for that very eloquent and laudatory introduction. It's just a pity you're not here to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> On this solemn occasion for just this once, there's no real chance for Muhammad Ali to blow his own horn. And therefore, since he can't be the honker, I will be the honky. <laughs> did not come here to bury this sepia Caesar, <laughs> but to praise him. On the other hand, every time he opens his mouth, he buries himself. <laughs> so Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Ali, the author, seriously, the, the, the versifier, the poet that I'd like to speak, and I'm sure that Dean is vitally interested in that aspect of Muhammad's versatility. Aren't you, Dean? <laughs> Don't feign innocence of the poetic art, Dean. For once tonight, drop your facade. <laughs> In front of all these people? <laughs> if you'll drop your facade, I'll... Not on the family hour. No. No, no, surely, surely, Dean, you're stirred by the names of Shelley, Keats, and Byron. <laughs> Well, do the name Ruby Begonia ring a bell? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, I didn't come in to talk sense with you. Nor have I come to discuss the literary quality of the poetry written by this colorful creator of cacophonous couplets. <laughs> Amazing, those KKK sounds turned Nipsey Russell two shades whiter. <laughs> Mr. Nipsey yes. They all told you in rhyme how he wins every time he's the greatest to ever take the cup. Well, if he can float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, why can't he imitate a clam and shut up? <laughs> tonight the most illustrious, the most magnificent superhuman on the planet Earth. He is really a big man in every respect. Big reputation and big in size. If you want to appreciate how big he is, we were in the casino. There was a little white fellow there gambling. He had 21 and was scared to say blackjack. <laughs> the dealer said, what you got? He said, gin. <laughs> Peaceful man, I just hope you won't turn around and hit Howard Cosell. He's ugly enough already. <laughs> I, uh, I, 
I guess I don't have to tell you how beautiful he is, but I can tell you he was backstage with a looking glass in his hand. He said, mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest in this land? Cosell leaned over and said, it's still Snow White, baby, and don't you forget it. <laughs> You can get rich If you find the doctor That delivered you I guarantee you Got a great malpractice case <laughs> she, said to Jeff, she said Mr. Ali When I'm near you I just get so flustered And so bothered He said You may be flustered baby But you won't be bothered <laughs> And we've heard you sing, and we're going to tie that yellow ribbon around your mouth. <laughs> Freddie Prince. They look alike. Freddie and Tony. I guess they all look alike, too, don't they? <laughs> Freddie not only looks great in his tuxedo, but on the way to the dance tonight, he made $15 in tips waiting on the table. <laughs> his wedding night here. He got married over at Caesar's Palace. He asked to see the Puerto Rican bridal suite and they led him to the kitchen. <laughs> Freddie was mad, but he didn't punch the guy because, you see, Puerto Ricans don't like to fight just one man. See, when you fight one man, you can only cut one way. They like to fight in a group where everywhere you throw your blades, you get somebody. <laughs> That's all right, Freddie. The Mexicans don't want you, but we'll take you. <laughs> Ain't but a speck between a spick and a spook. You know that. <laughs> when I heard the title of Gabe Kaplan's show, Come Back Carter, I thought it was about a convict. You see, where I live, when we tell a guy, welcome back, there's only one place he's been. <laughs> they say he's a Jew, but with that Afro hair, dude, there's a watermelon in your future somewhere. <laughs> Cell did one thing that has made all black people happy. He was born white. <laughs> but we are talking tonight about, I guess, the most agile technician in the pugilistic history. Hail to thee, Muhammad Ali. You're a universal star. Mohammed means enlightened leader, and that's exactly what you are. Now it's time for the KO punch. Here's our man of the hour, the heavyweight champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Muhammad Ali. Thank you, man. Some comedians up here I've heard of guys throwing fights. I'm sure you all have heard about guys that throw fights. But this is the first time that I've seen anybody throw a roast. <laughs> and Isabel Sanford. And Sherman Hemsley. The way he was scrambling and scrambling, you were almost as bad as white folks. <laughs> and Floyd Patterson. You know, when I fought you, man, I almost put you to sleep. And with that stuff you're talking tonight, you almost put me to sleep. <laughs> and and you, you are intelligent. You two fighters are intelligent. Most boxers couldn't even read what y'all read. I watched y'all read <laughs> No kidding. You get George Foreman or Joe Frazier kidding on that pretty good. <laughs> 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 you 
mean, you great. You are really great. I mean, you come here, you come here high and you still can make it look good. You don't seem like a man would have a big television show like this and such a world figure, nice looking. And he don't care nothing about these shows. He don't care nothing about the strips. He came in and they had it, champ. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh, that's up fine. Uh, got your thing down? See ya. All right, I'm going. Hey, John. <laughs> See, he's serious. <laughs> Got some type of talent, Coseo. We we've made it either being great, our good looks, personality, or connections, or some type of influence. But you are living proof that you don't need nothing to make it. 